Good morning. It is May 16th, and we'll be starting in 1 Samuel chapter 18, with verse number 5. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We pray that you would just allow your word to wash over us, that you would speak to us, Lord, that we would draw near to you and as your word says, if we draw near to you, then you will draw near to us. And so Lord, would you meet us where we're at this morning? Fill us with your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse number 5. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Now it happened as they were coming home when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very angry and the saying displeased him and he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward. And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied inside the house. So David played music with his hand as at other times, but there was a spear in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the spear, for he said, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped his presence twice. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Therefore when Saul saw that he had behaved wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, because he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, Here is my oldest daughter Merab. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, Let my hand not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. So David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life? Or what is my family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it happened at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should be given to David, that she was given to Adriel the Meholothite, as a wife. Now Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David, and they, saw, and they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. So Saul said, I will give her to him, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David a second time, You shall be my son-in-law today. And Saul commanded his servants, Communicate with David secretly, and say, Look, the king has delight in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servants spoke these words in the hearing of David, and David said, Does it seem to you a light thing to be the king's son-in-law, seeing I am a poor and lightly esteemed man? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, In this manner David spoke. Then Saul said, Thus you shall say to David, the king does not desire any dowry, but one hundred foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. So when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to become the king's son-in-law. Now the days had not expired, therefore David arose and went. He and his men and killed two hundred men of the Philistines, and David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full count to the king that he might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, as a wife. Then Saul knew that David, that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was still more afraid of David, so Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went out to war, and so it was, whenever they went out, that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. Chapter 19. Now Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and said, all to, said to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, del delighted greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, 
saying, My father, Saul, seeks to kill you. Therefore, please, be on your guard until morning and stay out in the secret place and hide. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are. And I will speak with my father about you, that when I observe, I will tell you. Then Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good towards you. For he took his life in his hands and killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against blood, sin against innocent blood, to kill David without a cause? So Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, As the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. Then Jonathan called David, and Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and struck them with a mighty blow, and they fled from him. Now a distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house, with spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hand. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with a spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If we do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through a window and went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed, put a cover of goat's hair for its head, and covered it with clothes. So when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent messengers back to David, saying, Bring him up to me in bed, that I may kill him. And when the messengers had come in, there was the image in the bed with the cover of goat's hair over his head. Then Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this, and sent my enemy away, so that he has escaped? And Michael answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take note, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the group of prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as the leader over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when Saul was told, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Then Saul sent messengers again a third time, and they prophesied also. Then he also went to Ramah and came to a great well that was in Sichu. So he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And someone said, Indeed, they are at Naoth and Ramah. So he went there to Naoth and Ramah. Then the Spirit of God was upon him also as he went and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah, and he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in the like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants. Oh, excuse me. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do not, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from you. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. 
Then they said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have only one Father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You were of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. And does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, No, we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, and whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him, and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Psalm 112, starting at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of the evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 12. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him, nor will he go to make the wise. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. And that concludes our reading for today. God bless you. Have a blessed day.